Hello, good day and welcome back to Go on the Run. And today we're going to continue with dockerizing our services. And this is part two of dockerizing. So in the previous video, if you remember what we did was we took our um, application and created Docker containers for each one of them. And then we were able to run them in Docker and still have them connect and all this other stuff. But we had to do that, like, you know, run each individual container, map ports and all this other stuff. So today we're going to try and see a simpler way of doing that, still using Docker containers. And we're going to use something called Docker Compose. Don't worry, Docker Compose command comes with um, the latest Docker commands. So if you install Docker in between the past year or so, you'll have Docker Compose. So nothing new. You shouldn't have to install anything new. So before we continue, let's try and understand something about how Docker manages the port and networking on your computer and between containers. So here's my computer. And within that computer, you have an Ethernet card installed, whether it's built in or not. That allows you to connect to your local area network. Everybody at home, whether you have a router or not, that's your local area network. Sometimes you hear people say your LAN. And when I connect my computer to my LAN, or you connect your computer to your LAN, you get an IP address, which is sort of a unique identifier assigned to each and every networkable appliance on that network. This is how they can be identified on a network. So now my computer has an IP address. One of the things that happen also is within my computer, you could think of that network that uh, my computer is attached to, the LAN, is also accessible or made accessible internally to every application that runs on my computer. So any application that runs on my computer, it has the ability to access that network. And this includes Docker also. And like my web browser, anything, all those are just applications that run my computer and they have access to this network. Now, as we know, one of the things that we do is we run containers inside of Docker. Now, Redis itself opens up a port or it listens on port 6397. That is within the container. That's why when we just run Redis server and if we do not map the port, we cannot have access to it because the port that Redis is opening is within that container. Now, if you're inside that container, you can totally connect to Redis over that port that it opened. But that port is within Redis because the way Docker operates, if you look at my previous Docker videos in the previous section, you'll see that all the containers are operating like if they're a little isolated computer themselves. So within them, they have their own processes, they have their own network and then all this other stuff. So what we've been doing is asking Docker to map a port externally to the internal one on the con uh, in the container. So we're saying, hey, make the port inside of the container accessible on my network. Then anything else on your network can also access that port because then now, that port is now available at your IP address. And so this is how we've been able to then connect from our you know, laptop like the terminal to that Redis container, or when we start up our container service, it is able to connect to Redis. Now, I'm not going to show a line from the server container going into the Redis container, but we're just going to assume that oh, when you have a container, in terms of reaching out, once you're inside a container, you can always reach out. So we're not going to draw a line. So if I'm inside my container, I can always reach out to the internet. I can always reach out to my local LAN. So therefore, my server container have access to my Reddit container because it can always reach out. And so you can reach it over that network, okay? The red network there. Our server also is opening up a port. And we want that port to be accessible because our counter container or counter application needs to reach our server. Our server needs to reach Redis, so that's why we have to expose the Redis port. And our counter needs to reach the server to send those counts, so hence why we have to expose the port on our server also so that the container can reach it. Because if we did not expose it, those application, the counter, for example, would be in its own container and it could reach out but even when it reaches out, there's nothing listening on the network, the red network of port 8080 
without us exposing it and mapping it. And similar for our polar, it needs to reach our server again. I'm not showing connection going out from the containers because they can always reach out. It's just a matter of if something is listening that they can connect to. And without you doing that mapping, it doesn't matter that internally inside the container, the servers open up and listen to port 80 or Redis is open up and port 80, uh, 63, 97. Those other containers would not be able to reach into that container. So we had to do the mapping. Every time we map a port from our container onto our network, guess what's happening? On our network, we now have these two ports available and that's, you might actually want that. There's nothing wrong with that. But just note how they're no longer available for any other application in our computer to use because even though that's running in a container, the fact that we mapped those ports to the container, they're not, they're not any longer available. Those port numbers are no longer available for our computer. And plus, if we map them onto our area network um, interface, now they're available um, to anything that's on our network. But in this um, deployment that we have, what do we really need to expose? We want to be able to access our server, but we really don't need to access the Redis um, server, right? The Redis server is being used by our server as storage. We don't need to do that. Only our server needs to access this. So it would be nice if there was a way for us to keep most of the communication between our Redis server, the server, the counter, and the pooler all isolated from our regular network and they're on their own network making all kind of noise there, they're talking back and forth. So that doesn't get exposed on our actual network. So this is where Docker networking comes in. And I'm going to show you that all we've always had this. It's been sort of hidden behind the scenes. But today, the way in which we're going to use it, it's going to get managed automatically for us. Now, you can create a network and assign containers to different networks. But we'll see using Docker Compose that how this can be done very easily. Now, I'm going to take a break here and say, if you're this far into the video and you're liking the material and you're not subscribed, then why not? Please take the minute and hit that subscription um, bell. And of course, if you are subscribed, thank you. I appreciate it. And thanks for coming back and thanks for being patient. Okay, so what is, how does Docker Networking now solve some of the problems we were talking about in terms of our port, those ports being exposed on our actual network? What we can do is we can ask Docker to create a network across those containers that we are interested in, that we want to be able to talk to each other. And now, when Redis opens a port, it's opening a port on that network that we asked Docker to create. And then the server is on that same network because that's what we can tell Docker. We can say, these four containers should be on the same network. And because they're on the same network, they can talk to each other on that same network. We don't have to worry about it. Docker is going to manage the movement of data between them. And that traffic, whatever they're whispering and talking about, is isolated. It's not on our red network. Of course, if we still want to be able to access our container, um, the server, we can expose that. But now notice, it's only one port that we have to expose. Okay, so now let's see how this is done.